What's up everybody? So today we're going to be doing a Plex comparison or Plex showdown for the Plex app on multiple platforms. First we've got the Roku streaming stick, then the Amazon Fire TV stick, the Plex home theater app for Mac or Windows, and finally the new Apple TV. So for those of you who aren't familiar, Plex is an app much like Kodi in that the user specifies media folders on a local or shared drive. It scrapes the metadata from the internet and then you can access those files in all their glory on a number of devices on or away from your home network. Uh, and then on the server side, it will transcode that file on the fly depending on your internet connection. So we're going to take a look at how the app runs on these platforms and we'll start by launching the app. What you'll first notice is that the Roku streaming stick takes a bit longer to load because the other three devices have a lot more RAM to work with. Now that we have the app loaded, we'll take a look at the main menu for each, starting with the Roku streaming stick. You can see that the libraries are over to the left, then continue watching. On deck, recently added media as you scroll from left to right in this interesting tile format with large and small posters. The Amazon Fire TV stick is a bit more basic with on deck than recently added and the library selection down at the bottom. Again, you have the movie and television posters aligned from left to right, top to bottom. Now the standard skin for Plex Home Theater is simple yet elegant. You have a vertical carousel for your libraries on the left with on deck and recently added for each library on the right with posters to select and fan art in the background. Reskinning is possible but I don't recommend it. Finally we have the new Apple TV interface. You can see that our libraries are located at the top. Then we've got continue watching, on deck, and then our recently added media. Uh, this is very similar to the Roku in execution, although differs uh, with it slightly in presentation. It presents you your media in a vertical fashion as opposed to horizontal. You'll also notice as we continue that the Fire TV stick presents and executes very similar to Plex Home Theater app. Now we're gonna take a look at the movie menus for each. So the first thing that you're going to notice is the similarity between the Fire TV Stick and the Plex Home Theater app where you have all of your movies listed in tiles from A to Z. The Roku and Apple TV, however, provide you with recently released, uh, recently added, and continue watching right off the bat with some filters as you scroll. Now what you can do is get to all of your titles on both of those by simply clicking the all option and they, like the other two, will present you with all of your movies. Now you can see that three of the four look very similar, uh, title left to right, top to bottom, where the Roku streaming stick has two rows of all your movies. However, you do have an alphabetical search at the bottom so that you don't have to scroll through your entire movie collection just to get to The Wizard of Oz. Now, within the movie menu on each interface, there are plenty of different filters that you can manually apply to sort your media. For instance, you can sort by actor and genre. Now, I'm going to demonstrate how to do that within each interface, and while I do that, I'm going to take some time to give you the tech specs of each of these devices. Realize the Plex Home Theater app will have the specs of the machine on which it is running. The Roku streaming stick is not exceptionally powerful with a 0.6 gigahertz processor. The Amazon Fire TV stick has one gigabyte of RAM, although only 512 megabytes is used for video. The new Apple TV has uh, two gigabytes of RAM. All of these devices will output video at 1080p resolution. The Roku and Fire TV sticks are 802.11n, and the new Apple TV is 802.11ac. And it is also the only one of the three which sports an Ethernet port. Uh, all three of those players can pass through Dolby Digital, 5.1 surround sound, and uh, as long as you have an AV receiver capable of uh, playing that, 
and they can all output 7.1 surround sound as well. Now once you've selected a file to watch, you can see that you have some additional menu options here on the Media Info page. For instance, streaming quality, audio stream, and subtitle options. You can see that again, Roku and Apple are similar in that they give you a button for resume watching, whereas the Fire TV Stick and Plex Home Theater give you that option once you've hit the play button. Now I've sped up the Roku buffer time not because an, it isn't snappy in normal circumstances but because it is very far away from my wireless router. Now I'm just going to take a look at the menu options within the playback window and as you can see the most robust options come from Plex Home Theater but at least the Roku and Fire TV sticks have the ability to turn on subtitles within the playback window whereas Apple TV does not. That would have to be done in the previous menu. Now I'd like to take a minute to highlight what I think is a cool feature of the Apple TV that makes it stand out from the rest. As you can see, the Plex server has scraped not just the movie info, but also Rotten Tomato scores at the top, some internet extras, reviews from Rotten Tomatoes, related movies within your Plex library to include other movies with the same actors, and then also the cast at the bottom. The Plex Home Theater app does something similar in that it provides extras for the movie. However, it does not display the other information that the Apple TV does. The Roku and Fire TV sticks don't even display the internet extras. We'll briefly take a look at TV show menus to see how you would go about drilling down into a series. As you can see, the layouts are very similar to the movie layouts of each, but once you click on a TV show, you are presented with the seasons view for each series. Notice that the Fire TV Stick and the Plex Home Theater app have an all option, which displays all the episodes irrespective of season. Once you click on a season, you are taken to the episode view, and each platform has a different way of displaying this, but notice that they all display the season poster and all have options to play the season or shuffle the entire season. Clicking on an episode gives you the episode information with similar options to that of the movie info page. Now I'm going to take a minute to compare the live TV playback capabilities with the ITV channel known as iContact. Now if you're not familiar with ITV then check out my other videos where I explain what that is and how to set it up. Setting up eye contact itself was no straightforward task, but I got it working somehow. So what you'll notice is that playback works on all but the Plex Home Theater app, interestingly enough. And what you don't really see here is that the Fire TV Stick only displays the picture in a 4x3 aspect ratio regardless of its broadcast ratio. None of these are perfect 720p streams, but they'll do the trick in a pinch. Now the winner in my view is the Apple TV mostly because I think for a front end device that's not a computer it is the most feature rich platform. You can tell that the Plex developers really put a lot of effort into developing the Plex app for Apple TV as can be seen here by this really cool top shelf view when you put the app at the top row of the main menu. However it's going to cost the most of the three at $150 starting out. The Roku stick and the Fire TV stick without the voice remote are currently at $40 on Amazon, and that price is hard to beat when it comes to a Plex front end, especially when you are looking to buy it as a gift for someone else. So that's it for me. Please leave me a thumbs up if you liked the video, but especially if you really liked the video, and leave a comment at the bottom if you have any questions. Remember to subscribe and...